So this is what, it's a drone. It's basically called a tanpura, a tanpura. Which is an instrument. Which is an instrument like a sitar, but it has, a, you know, a gourd-like mm -hmm. body, and it's got four strings that are going all the way up. And traditionally, that tanpura goes, you know, a little bit, uh, yeah. is a long, you know, and you, it's put on the, on the lap or right here in front of the lap. And that's also tuned to a certain raga, like in the ragas that have ma, you'll tune ma, which is the fourth. Okay. Or the ragas that have pa, which is the fifth. Okay. As tabla players, we just tune to the tonic, which is the sa, which is the basic. Okay. So in this case, it's a pure C. And as you can see, or as you can hear, I'm slightly lower than the actual yeah. C. So what I would do is I'd take my trusty hammer, and here on the head, you'll see a small ring around the head, which is where I do my minor tuning. So if I'm off by a lot, uh, for example, I'm at a B or something and I'm mm -hmm. tuning to a C, I'll hit the pegs down to give the head a little bit more tension. And that way the head kind of goes out, it brings tunes the pitch up, up, brings the pitch up. Mm -hmm. um, in Indian music, do you have a, a notation system? And if you do, do you put it in measures the same as we do? Or do you do something different? Yeah, so Indian music is more cyclical versus okay. linear. Okay. So Western music is linear, meaning you, you go through it, you go through it, like you said, it's fours measure or threes. Measure one, measure, measure 17, measure 104. It. Right. Right. So in Indian music, what happens is, so we pick rhythmic cycles of 16 beats, seven beats, 10 beats, eight beats. Okay. So for example, let's say somebody is playing a melody in seven. So I'll, let's try this. So it's an accompanying instrument, mm -hmm. you're playing in seven. Uh -huh. uh, so I, if I'm playing in seven, so let's let's take the case where somebody, uh, I'm accompanying a musician and okay. they're doing seven. Right? I'm, I'm providing the rhythmic stability, so I'm not doing much. And every once in a while... He's you'll, pretty humble. Yeah. I'm not doing much, yeah. I'm just dropping a crazy rhythm in seven, I mean... Psh. You know, yeah. <laughs> nothing much. And then, humble guy. Every right. once in a while, they'll turn and to me and say, "Now it's my turn." Okay. Okay. So the, now he'll hold the melody that he started. Okay. And then it'll be my turn to do some variations. Oh, ah, okay. One question too, why are we on the floor? Oh, good question. So traditionally, you know, this is how the Indian musicians used to sit in back in the court. Okay. Besides, it's the best way to sit. If, uh, if, you, if you go to yoga, uh, you know, and you do this, this is the best thing for your spine, for your body, and for your overall health. So in the current age, we do have stands that I can put these on uh -huh. and I can stand. You I know, was shocked seeing you set up standing up yeah although traditionally we consider our instruments as our friends okay so we went you know our friends are most comfortable sitting down okay like this so we On sit down floor. with them hmm. and play it's great to exchange ideas 
in musical language mm. you know when i say dha tere kitta tere kitta tere kitta tere kitta dhati dhage tena ke na dhati dhage dhati dhage tena ke na we're speaking in musical language mm-hmm. you know we're not it's not the words that we understand but still there is a communication going yeah. on mm-hmm. and when you have different people with all these different backgrounds and different cultures and different ethnicities come in together and we're all speaking in the language of the of music then all of our biases and everything kind of falls away you know to me that's a beautiful experience because you're just being you know mm. you're in the state of being just exchanging ideas <laughs>